Recently, an organization unveiled a shocking new technology, a battery ejection system, and it set China's car community on fire. A video shows a car labeled China Collision Repair Technology Center. There's a loud bang, and a battery pack weighing several hundred kilos is blasted out from under the car and lands several meters away. Officials say the China Collision Repair Technology Center and Joyson Electronics jointly introduced the ejection system on September 19th. The system uses the same kind of gas generator found in airbags to push the battery out. If the battery goes into thermal runaway, the device can throw the battery out of the car within one second and land three to six meters away in a so-called safe zone. After the battery ejection video went viral online, people mocked it and raised worries. The battery can be ejected now. This tech claims that if the battery catches fire or is about to explode, it can eject the battery in one second and keep the driver safe. But besides range, what's the difference between this and a torpedo? I want to ask. When you were researching this, did you consider the other cars and pedestrians nearby? You eject the battery because it's overheated, and then someone else's car catches fire and that battery bounces back. Imagine a busy parking lot. If a pedestrian gets hit by what's basically a bomb, they'd be burned to death. Luckily, cars are usually on the ground. If this was in the sky, it'd be like a bomber. I don't get it. Is ejection the point? Shouldn't the focus be on making batteries that don't catch fire in the first place? At first it sounds impressive. When a battery goes into thermal runaway, you eject it and the people inside the car are safe. But have you thought what happens if this car drives into Iraq or Syria? After you press the button, boom, you've made an instant car bomb, a civilian attack version. That's just prioritizing self-protection by throwing the danger at everyone else. A battery pack weighs more than half a ton. Who could withstand that being hurled at them? If this tech hits the road, the researchers are responsible. Hurry up and research real battery safety instead of abandoning the car to save the driver. Self-protection cannot come at the cost of harming others. Some people did the math. A mid to large SUV battery pack can weigh up to 150 kilograms. At the ejection speed shown in the video, the battery could travel an equivalent of 36 to 54 kilometers per hour. The consequences of hitting a pedestrian or a vehicle would be horrifying. On Douyin, many commenters wrote, Keep your life for yourself and eject disasters onto others. Do whatever you want and leave others with nothing. This proves that Chinese electric cars could explode at any moment, and they still can't solve this ticking time bomb. If the car just burns, insurance can pay, but if the battery is ejected and injures other people or damages other cars, the owner will pay a heavy price. Some people have suggested, should we set up an ejection zone in parking lots? A comment from a netizen directly pointed out a major flaw in the technology. This invention is terrifying. When an electric vehicle battery catches fire, the fire is intense. Once the battery is ejected, it becomes a source of fire and can easily ignite nearby cars or buildings. The controversy has sparked widespread discussion because the battery ejection system doesn't address the core issue of battery safety. To protect one or two people inside the car, it may cause irreparable harm to many innocent people outside the car. The critical problem is where and when to eject the battery. In a traffic jam, cars are parked closely together. In a neighborhood, there are pedestrians everywhere. How does the system decide what constitutes a safe ejection zone? Even if it has LiDAR and cameras, it would need to complete environmental scanning, risk assessment, and trigger the ejection in one second. Can AI react that fast? What if a sensor misjudges? For example, if the car goes over a bump and the vibration is too strong, causing the battery to suddenly eject, the consequences would be disastrous. Furthermore, the reliability of the ejection mechanism itself is questionable. If the machine malfunctions and the battery gets stuck mid-air, or the ejection force is too weak, the system may cause more harm than good. Even more bizarre, amid all the criticism, the parties involved in the trial have either denied their involvement or disappeared altogether. On September 22nd, responding to the video circulating online, Joyce and Electronics stated to Beiko Finance that the company had no collaboration agreement with the China Collision Repair Technology Center, and that the technology was unrelated to them. However, earlier media reports clearly mentioned Joyce and Electronics, leading to suspicions that the company may be trying to deflect the blame. Industry insiders revealed that the China Collision Repair Technology Center is part of MIT Group, which owns domestic brands like Windtools and Bestune. MIT Group was established in 1992 and specializes in automotive testing equipment and maintenance services. However, Beiko Finance noted that the organization is no longer reachable. 
In addition, observant netizens have noticed that the car in the video is a Sherry iCar 03T. The online backlash has turned towards Sherry, with some people even calling for a boycott of the brand, saying that this technology is immoral. Sherry claims that it had been wronged. Although the test vehicle was a Sherry, Sherry was not involved in the technology development and was only chosen as the test vehicle due to its regular chassis structure. Netizens analyze that the iCar 03T's chassis is easy to modify and that it unfortunately became a prop in this experiment. The testing party also emphasized that they had independently purchased the test vehicles and were not affiliated with any car manufacturer. After Joyce and Electronics' response, a staff member from the China Collision Repair Technology Center, who claimed to have participated in the trial, posted a video explaining the controversy in detail. They stated that the current demonstration was only in the technical verification phase. Hello everyone, I'm one of the participants in this battery ejection testing project and also a staff member at the China Automotive Collision Technology Research Center. Recently, our battery ejection test video has gained widespread attention online. Over the past 48 hours, the video has been viewed by over 100 million people and we've received over 100,000 comments criticizing us for more than two days. Initially, we were focused on technology, but now we've become the subject of ridicule. We've decided to come forward and address everyone's concerns. The original intention behind this technology was to research a new way of energy replenishment called side insertion battery swapping. The design principle is simple. The battery is inserted or removed from the right side of the vehicle, aiming to provide electric vehicle users with a more convenient and faster energy replenishment method. During our research, we found that under certain structural designs, the battery could potentially detach from the car. This led us to wonder, in extreme cases, such as when a battery experiences thermal runaway, could ejecting the battery help prevent more widespread damage to the vehicle? That's how the battery ejection functionality test came about. The researcher further defended the technology, stating that ejection would only occur within a safe zone and that the system is capable of recognizing the movement of surrounding vehicles and pedestrians, avoiding a blind trigger. However, the complexity of real-world scenarios made these statements seem insufficient. From a technical perspective, there are three major flaws with the battery ejection technology that can't be overlooked. First is the risk of kinetic energy. Experts have calculated that when a 400 kilogram battery pack is ejected at the demo speed, the force impact is equivalent to a 1.5 ton sedan rear-ending a vehicle at 80 kilometers per hour. In areas like residential neighborhoods or schools, this would be like a moving bomb. Second is the risk of false triggers. Current sensors still have a 3.7% misjudgment rate in rain or snow. Passing over speed bumps or even slight scratches could trigger an ejection. Lastly, there's the potential for secondary disasters. If an ejected battery ignites and lands in areas like green belts or gas stations, it could easily start fires. To date, there is no clear standard for liability. Aside from safety and ethics, the practicality and cost-effectiveness of this technology are also in question. A technical lead from an EV company said, the current approach is to minimize the risk of thermal runaway through innovations in battery cell materials, precise monitoring with battery management systems, and heat spread prevention technologies. The ejection option would increase system weight, costs, and risk of failure. Its reliability needs extremely rigorous validation. Thankfully, this technology has been firmly rejected by the majority of netizens during its testing phase. If such an immoral technology were mass-produced for commercial use, how would surrounding vehicles and pedestrians protect themselves? Just imagine, you're driving, walking, or cycling on the road, and suddenly, a battery pack smoking and flying out from a nearby car. How terrifying would that be? In fact, other automakers have already developed battery ejection technology, and there's a clear trail of development in this area. Back in November 2024, an NIO ET7 lost control while driving at high speeds and crashed into a road barrier. The impact was so severe that the front of the car was nearly completely destroyed, but the driver wasn't seriously injured and was able to crawl out of his seat to escape. The video shows that after the collision, the battery pack under the car fell off due to mechanical shock, flew several meters away, and caught fire nearby. The flames were mostly confined to the battery pack itself and didn't quickly spread to the inside of the car. The video also reveals that the collision caused damage to the battery pack's mounting structure, which ejected the battery pack due to inertia. 
Although this ejection allowed the driver to escape, the battery burning on the ground could pose a danger to pedestrians. Although NIO did not disclose any ejection or automatic ejection mechanism, concerns about secondary risks were amplified, with discussions on X highlighting that once it flies out, it's like a time bomb. At the time, some netizens harshly criticized NIO, saying they were dragging others down with them. If something happens, the manufacturer should take responsibility for secondary risks. Before engaging in civil actions, responsibilities must be clearly defined. If there's ambiguity in responsibility, it will complicate insurance claims and legal disputes. Without clear laws, this technology cannot be mass-produced and pushed to the market. Legal experts also pointed out that the battery ejection technology itself shifts the risks from inside the car to public roads, which may violate the road traffic safety law that forbids throwing objects on roads. In reality, there are many new technologies that may pose public safety risks, but the public may not always have the ability to discern these risks. This requires strict self-regulation by research institutions and careful oversight by regulatory bodies. Now, electric vehicle fires are becoming increasingly common, almost like moving time bombs. In 2024, there were at least 5,000 electric vehicle fires in China, far surpassing those of fuel vehicles. Every time there's news of EVs catching fire, it raises public concern about the safety of power batteries. At around 4 a.m. on September 10, 2025, a loud explosion shattered the night sky outside a factory in Putian City, Fujian Province. An EV, which was charging, suddenly caught fire. Surveillance footage showed flames shooting out from the bottom of the car, quickly spreading to ignite a neighboring gasoline-powered vehicle. The two cars were soon engulfed in flames. After investigation, the fire was suspected to have been caused by an electrical fault in the vehicle's charging system, leading to thermal runaway in the battery. On September 4, 2025, a collision between an NIO car and a BYD car in Nanjing led to a fire in the BYD vehicle. The scene was captured by a passerby and quickly went viral. On May 24, 2025, in the Suzhou Industrial Park, a fire suddenly broke out when a Roewei EI-5 was charging at a third-party charging station. The fire led to the total destruction of two NIO vehicles. The most unfortunate part was that a Xiaomi SU-7 vehicle parked between the NIOs was also caught in the fire, and its rear end was completely burnt. On April 16, 2025, a fire broke out at an EV charging station in Shanghai. An electric taxi caught fire from the bottom, and within minutes, the car was engulfed in flames. Fortunately, firefighters responded quickly and no one was injured. On August 19, 2024, a vehicle fire occurred in an underground parking lot in Guangdong, which resulted in three cars and multiple electric bikes being destroyed. Investigation revealed that the fire was caused by thermal runaway in an EV battery. On July 26, 2024, a fire broke out in the underground parking garage in Changsha's high-tech industrial development zone, destroying 10 fuel-powered vehicles and over 60 electric bicycles. The fire was caused by thermal runaway in a faulty battery of a charging electric bicycle. On February 23, 2024, a major fire occurred in a residential area in Nanjing, resulting in at least 15 deaths and 44 injuries. The investigation revealed that the fire was caused by thermal runaway from an over-modified lithium battery. Currently, lithium-ion batteries are the mainstream power source for electric vehicles. The reasons for battery fires can be summarized into five main factors. 1. Collision fires. Mechanical damage can cause the battery separator to rupture, leading to thermal runaway. 2. Cost-cutting, impacting safety. Intense market competition has driven cost cuts, which may compromise battery safety performance. 3. Manufacturing quality issues. Issues such as uneven electrode materials, impurities, or poor packaging during the battery production process can create fire risks. 4. Improper charging equipment or operation. Using unqualified chargers, malfunctioning charging stations, or improper user operation, like fast charging, can lead to vehicle failure. 5. Aging and wear. Over time, the battery's internal materials may degrade or the structure may weaken, increasing the risk of short circuits or thermal runaway. These factors collectively raise the risk of electric vehicle fires. While thermal runaway cannot be entirely avoided with current technology, improvements in materials, system optimization, and structural design can help effectively control the damage caused by thermal runaway. Taking industry leader Tesla as an example, its vehicles innovatively place the battery pack at the bottom of the car. Through clever design, the battery pack is integrated into the car's body structure, forming a strong and stable chassis.
This move not only significantly enhances the overall rigidity of the vehicle, improving its resistance to deformation and collisions, but also significantly reduces the risk of the battery being directly impacted or damaged during a crash. Compared to controversial technologies like battery ejection, Tesla's prevention-first approach is more applicable at this stage. These solutions directly address the root causes of self-ignition with more stable results and no secondary hazards. Any innovation that shifts risk onto public spaces will ultimately not go far. From widespread ridicule online to partners denying involvement, the battery ejection technology debacle will eventually fade, but the reflection it leaves behind will not disappear. Researcher Zhang Xiang at the Automotive Industry Innovation Center of Beifang University of Technology told Beka Finance that the true direction for the industry should be to ensure safety through core technology. This means resources should be focused on breakthroughs in fundamental technologies, such as solid-state batteries, or improving the thermal management system of liquid batteries, strengthening battery pack structural integrity, and enhancing intelligent early warning systems. These are the practical steps to take. Thank you.